my darlings, it's your girl Duchess Charm and welcome back to the channel. I binge watched Love is Blind season 2. Like in 24 hours, I was already watching the finals. So it's not going to be like a play by play review. We're going to be talking mainly about the couples, right? And we're going to kind of talk a little bit about the reunion. The reunion that I'm really, really, really disappointed in because people that were supposed to be getting heat weren't really getting heat the reunion was kind of like a kumbaya type of thing so if you guys don't know what love is blind is it is a show on netflix and i know i don't watch it on netflix because i don't have any netflix so i have to watch it bootleg but it's a show on netflix where essentially it's like blind dating like 100 percent blind dating there's 15 guys that come in and there's 15 girls they all have the opportunity to meet each other behind a wall so that's the trick about it they don't get to see each other and whoever makes a connection, the guy then proposes to this woman and then they meet each other after the proposal. This whole experiment takes about six weeks to get wrapped up. So they spend like two weeks in the pods. That's what they call the place that they're dating where they can't see each other. After they spend that time and decide, hey, you know, will you marry me? They then spend a few days in whatever destination country they're going to have their mini vacation then the rest of the time which is like two weeks is spent kind of getting to know each other moving in with each other meeting the family and all of them something there at the end of the six weeks you have a wedding where they'll decide at the altar if they are going to say yes or they're going to say no spoiler alert there were six couples but only two of them got married and to be honest I think it's only one of these couples that got married that I was kind of supportive of. At first, I never did support them, but then, you know, I warmed up to them after seeing their interactions and everything else. Majority of these couples should not have ended up together, and that is what we're going to jump into. The first couple that I'm going to talk about is Daniel and Nick. I'm going to pop up their picture right here on screen. So, Daniel and Nick made a connection in the pod. He decided to propose to her and then they met and it was really funny because they kept on saying I love you. This is one of the couples that said I love you like really really early on. So from the meet they were just like oh my god I love you, I love you, I love you. And they kept on saying I love you almost every time we saw them. Anyways, now Danielle she's very very insecure. She said that she used to be you know a bit bigger and then she lost a bit of weight. And all throughout her just talking about her insecurities I'm like... I don't see it, but those insecurities kept eating at her. So when they got to Mexico, things were going good for the most part. But I think after the first night, Daniel drank too much and everything, and she was sick in the room. Now, Nick sacrificed his whole day to be in the room to take care of Daniel, right? And then later on in the night, all of the couples were meeting up. And this was like the first time everybody's meeting each other and seeing each other because the girls know what the girls look like because they all stay together and the guys know what the guys look like but they've never met face to face so it's only the person that you've been engaged to that you would meet so this is the first meeting of everybody nick decided say yo we might go, go down there anyways or maybe both of them had the conversation i don't know and she stayed up there with her sick self in the room but nick went down by the beach he was having fun he was talking to everybody observing and whatever and then he went back to the room and right away Danielle started an argument over fucking nothing. She was like, oh my gosh, you were down there for three hours and I could see you from the room having fun and blah, blah, blah. And he was saying, okay, what was I supposed to do? She then told Nick that she went into the closet of their hotel room and was crying. Danielle, right off the bat, was just an emotional vampire. So it turns into this huge argument. And from the thought, I just know, say, yo, this girl, I got cast majority of the arguments in this relationship. And she did. Like, she was so insecure. It's like she needed Nick to just be present and be there 24 7. Not even 24 7, 25 8. So, when they moved back into the city and they were living together, and you know, the whole meeting of the family and everything, when Nick went to meet Daniel's family, apparently he was having some issues with his family as well, and they were texting him and stuff like that. 
So he was texting them back and apparently he was talking about it to some extent. And Danielle made it all about her. She was saying that she was so excited that he got to meet her parents and everything. But he was preoccupied and she didn't feel as if he had as much fun. She just kept on projecting, projecting, projecting and she was so insecure. And I was surprised that these people got married and they should not have gotten married. Even though they're still together now, which is a year later we find that out at the reunion that yo, them still together, it's been a year, blah blah blah. I just hated the whole situation and I hated the fact that Nick just had to be reassuring her like every single second. They could be going good they could have a wonderful date and then they go back to the room and then she just starts projecting her insecurities on him and he has to be the bigger person like she did not breathe in and breathe out at any freaking moment now when we saw them at the reunion they were just like oh life is wonderful and everything is great now we move on to the next couple deep tea and shake and right here, so this was just a train wreck waiting to happen. This couple was, not even this couple, Shake. Shake was an ass. Like, he was a total ass. Even at the reunion, my God, everyone was just annoyed at him. I'm surprised someone didn't suck him in his fucking face. Like, it was that. Just him talking, talking, talking. Even the host had to be like, listen, I think that you're on the wrong show. So because he was asking questions about the girl's looks and the dress size and stuff like that, even though you're not supposed to be asking those questions because love is blind, he made this really funny joke. He was like, you know, what if love was blurry? Not blind, but blurry. And I died. So... Deep Tea is Indian. Shake is also Indian. Deep Tea has never dated an Indian guy before in her life. She's always dated white guys and whatever. Shake, he just goes for the blonde hair, blue eyed type of girl. So, you know, white girl is theme. Go to. So, I think the reason why they connected is because they had similar backstories. Both of them were born in India and then they moved over to America and all of them something there so they had similar backstories similar families and that's how they really connected honestly i don't think shake took anything serious he only proposed to deep tea because she was the only one that was interested in him based on my observation like he was rude to everybody else he was even rude to her because at one point he was saying he loved going to music festivals and stuff like that and he would love to lift a girl on his shoulders and she was just like oh my gosh that's amazing and then he's like would i be able to lift you on my shoulders and she was she was just flabbergasted at the whole conversation but even though he was an ass she still liked him and they still connected now he proposed in the pods and then they met each other and you know she's very 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 gorgeous he's all right and then they go to mexico now when they go to mexico mayu was so disrespectful him tell everybody and their grandmother say he was not attracted to deep tea he was like i feel like i'm dating my aunt i feel like i'm dating a family member i have no attraction to her whatsoever we have like this strong emotional connection but that's where it starts and stop instead of sitting down and having a conversation with her he might tell everybody else and him not tell she they meet each other's parents and deep tea's parents were so amazing they were so in love Oh my god, they're the real winners of this series. Just seeing the way that they interacted and the way that they talked about each other, it was just so lovely. Her parents were like, listen, it's kind of unorthodox, the method that you chose to go through. You were always against arranged marriage and she had never brought home a guy. So this is literally the first person that her parents were meeting. And they were really kind to him and everything. And they were like whatever floats your boat then deep tea met shake's parents and his parents were really really sweet towards her afterwards shake was having a conversation with his mom saying listen i'm not really feeling that animalistic attraction to her blah 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 
and his mom looked at him and said she is so sweet she is so special and if you are not feeling this relationship if you are not in it 100 percent, you need to let her know because she deserves someone that would not even give her one percent less and i loved loved what his mom said because his mom was really honest towards him so on their wedding day Deepti looked gorgeous she looked so beautiful in her traditional attire and everything and when the pastor asked her you know will you take Sheikh to be your husband she looked at him and she said I can't do this you know I deserve someone that's going to give me everything and she walked off and it was so amazing because I would have hated for her to say yes because she really 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 deserved better and shake you can't tell him it's shame you know because him turned around and he was just like hey hey you know it's still a party we're going to celebrate na 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 ask what Cole did and he was just doing the most i'm like sir you need to sit and be silent they asked him if he was sad about it and he said you know him kind of feel some type of way but he's not really that hurt so that means i'm not even that take it serious in the first place if his mom came out to talk to her her mom was very supportive and and her mom was also very proud of her her mom did not criticize her for her decision or anything her mom was very understanding she really really was proud we move on to the next couple which is natalie and shane and i'm so glad that they did not get married because it would have been some bullshit now shane is a whole different story and while i was tweeting shane is on drugs Nobody can tell me that. Shane talk fast. Shane have them crazy eye ear. Him always look crazy. And this man top lip don't move. His top lip does not move. So every time he's talking, it's... it's wait, I'm trying to push in my top lip. I can't do it. My lips are too big. But essentially, his top lip doesn't move and all you're seeing is just teeth and gum and his bottom lip moving you know like them people that will have like an overbite with that's how <laughs> that's how he looked for a majority of the time this man upon speed and he was so immature it was crazy like emotionally he was so immature even when natalie and Shane was talking about their wedding this man say he want hot dogs and nuggets and fries like him want stuff off of the kids menu because everybody eats that at a fucking wedding the way that he dealt with situations the way that he was talking to everybody he was just like a child and the way that him move from like a zero to 100 immediately that man was on drugs so we can't talk about Natalie and Shane without talking about Shayna because it was somewhat of a love triangle to say the least. So Shane was interested in both Shayna and Natalie and I think he ended up choosing Natalie because of a situation that him kind of get himself into, right? With him emotionally immature self. Natalie steps into the pod. Shane steps into the pod and he's just like, Shayna, what are you wearing? And just, you know, jump right into it. So Natalie was confused because she did not know that he was talking to Shayna a certain way. So she said, this isn't Shayna, this is Natalie. And instead of Shane kind of realizing saying do something wrong and apologizing straight off the bat, he went straight into defensive mode. Natalie go both to our business and she was very upset. But on the next pod meeting, pod meeting for Natalie and Shane, him didn't apologize or anything. He just said, will you be my girlfriend? She accepted that. She was so excited and she went back to the women's quarters. Well excited and everything. And Shane did kind of feel a certain way. So Shane went to meet with Shane. She was upset about it and she's just like, well, if you have a girlfriend, me you can't really be in this party trying to connect and whatever. 
But she did sidetrack that well fast because him did get some bullshit excuse and then he's like, okay, what are you wearing? What I realized with Shayna's conversation with Shane was very surface level, nothing deeper to their conversation. When it came to his conversations with Natalie, it was a bit more deeper, but it was more deeper from her side. So she was like drawing more things out of him. Anyways, so two tools, Shane say, yo, he's going to propose to Natalie. So he goes into the pod and Shayna comes in there and Shayna is just like, listen, I have something to tell you, Shane. I'm in love with you. You're my number one. And she's telling this man, all of them something here, you know. But here where the mix up lies. At this point in time, Shayna was already proposed to by someone else. We're going to talk about that situation further down. Well, probably next. So even though Shayna was proposed to and she had the ring and everything, she went in there for whatever reason, confessing her love to Shane. And Shane was like, I don't know why you're telling me this. You should have told me this three days ago. Um, we haven't spoken in three days, but I'm going to propose to Natalie. So Shayna go about her business and then Shane proposed to Natalie. And of course she said yes. So they met up, they saw each other. Um, I don't know, like they were just not compatible to me. Natalie was very serious. She was very goal oriented. She didn't have her shit together. And Shane, he was just all over the place living life on the edge type of thing seemed very immature as i said before and he always needed reassurance so while they were in the pods natalie would give him all of that reassurance and everything right but outside of the pod she seemed very mean in a sense like he would be asking her for compliments and stuff like that and she'd be like you know, take off your shirt. No, no, no. Put it on back. Like, she wasn't hyping him up. And he wanted that. He wanted a hype girl. He wanted a cheerleader. And he was not getting it from this girl. No, Shane met her parents probably, like, a week before the wedding. I kid you not. I, like, 10 days before the wedding. She did not tell her parents anything about this experiment. So, like, her sitting her parents down in Shane's apartment was the first time they were hearing everything and she literally just dropped the bomb on them and then shane came over but they were saying you know if you're happy we're happy a day before the wedding they had like a huge argument and shane was saying all kind of bullshit and some mean stuff and he was like oh i wish i never met you you're the worst thing that ever happened to my life and she took that to heart she said she felt unsafe in that moment and that secure feeling that she felt her own shame she didn't have that secure feeling anymore so she said no at the altar shane was acting like a big baby but you know at the end of the day it is what it is so we're going to move on to the next couple and it is a perfect time to talk about shana and kyle now shana did a lot of messy bullshit and she said a lot of shit especially when she was on the beach with um shane and she called the whole relationship fake and everything and she was not called out at the freaking reunion well she was kind of called out for what well, what was she called out for she was called out for confessing her love to shane and everything while she was engaged to kyle um but that was it that's it that's all like she did other messy shit anyway so shana and kyle they connected in the pods well i don't to be honest, I never really seen a connection between them and I felt Shayna said yes to the proposal simply because Shane didn't propose to her. In the pod, they were having deep conversations and stuff. And not even deep conversations. It's mainly Kyle just to make fun of her voice and accent. So that's it, that's all. But anyways, they got to talking about religion and Shayna said that she was deeply religious and she's a Christian and blah blah blah. Kyle made it known that he's an atheist and she was like, you know, I have to think about it because you're an atheist and I do want someone to lead me spiritually, blah, blah, blah. Kyle was determined to make it work and to make sacrifices for her. He wasn't going to change his stance, but he didn't think it was that much of a big deal. But Shayna, she made it that much of a big deal. So anyways, Kyle gave her his mother's ring. And she sit down there, she had think about it, she start ball, and then she said yes. She should have said no right from the jump. 
So anyways, after she say yeah to my youth, right? That is when she go over to Shane Pod and I tell him, yo, my love you and all of them something there. And Shane is just like, get the fuck out of here. So she dip on her own and stuck with Kyle. So when they met, Kyle was really excited. Shayna was not that excited. And then she brought up the religion thing again. And Kyle was like, listen, easy yourself. We're going to make it work. They went to Mexico. Shayna again brought up the religion thing. And Kyle was like, listen, we don't need to talk about that right now. Asphalt coded. While they were chilling in the room, Shayna said, you know, I think that we should sleep in two separate rooms. And Kyle was like, okay, no problem. And she never took up herself and she left. She never tell Kyle so she'll leave. She'll just leave. Boom, sleeve. Leave the man in Mexico. Now they met up back in the city and Kyle was saying, listen, I really think that this can work and everything. And she said, you know what? She's going to give it a try. They went to meet Shayna's family. And they were having really good conversations. Kyle seemed like a good fit in the family because he's like, oh, I do dirt biking. And Shayna's brothers were like, yeah, we do that too. And Kyle was in construction. That's what Shayna's family does, construction. And it was like really meshing really well. When it got to the part about religion, Kyle was being very honest. And he's like, that's not my forte. They were judgy, but not that much like okay pump the brakes type of thing so after the parents meeting and everything Shayna she was just really standoffish she kept on talking about her feelings for Shane which was pissing me off because I'm like you don't even know if Shane is this Christian man that you want him to be you just felt a stronger connection with Shane and this man did choose you and that is why you're hung up on him I don't even know why she bother say yes to Kyle but it was just a whole shit show it was just a whole mess so Kyle and Shayna end up meet up again and she said listen I have to give you back your ring I really can't do this I cannot look past the religion um kyle was very heartbroken but to be honest it was his fault because even though shayna did lead him on he was the one that was trying harder than she was and i do 100 percent believe that she was using that as an excuse because she just did not like this man she did not like even the blind could have said she never liked this man so obviously there was no wedding no nothing so let's talk about the other couple mallory and salvador and them is a next shit show and i'm so glad that they didn't get married so mallory she had another love interest jared 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 i believe his name is and Jared actually asked her, what would your response be if I were to ask you to marry me? She said she would say no, like, you know, she got really emotional, she got ball and everything. And she's just like, I really have stronger feelings for Salvador. And then Matthew did a ball as well, which is Jared. But we're going to talk about him later because he did end up getting married and all of them something here to him second choice. But anyways, pump the brakes, Duchess, pump the brakes. So... Mallory, she you now woke up with Salvador. Salvador asked her to get married and she was like, yes, no problem. And then they met each other and she did not like him. She was not attracted physically to him. And you could tell, like it was so obvious. And then she just became very uncomfortable. And from that moment, Salvador started to feel insecure and he started to pull back and it did hurt my soul because Salvador was so so sweet but you could tell from that moment the insecurity was just peaking they went to Mexico Mallory met Jared they were sitting at the bar and they were having some inappropriate conversations so in the pods they had a conversation about the type of jewelry that Mallory would like and Mallory said that she likes gold. Jared saw that Salvador gave Mallory a silver ring and he was like I know you don't like that ring that's not the ring that you wanted you wanted gold. She was like yeah so she was literally there giving Jared a forward and everything and Salvador was at the side and he's looking at the chemistry between them and everything and he felt even more shitty you understand and there was no point in time that I saw Mallory really hype him up Salvador he was really trying he would have sing fear 
he uh, prepared a picnic for her stuff like that and he was really trying and I don't think there was a point in time where Mallory really and truly appreciated it I think she was just there for being their sake wedding day come now right and they're at the altar and surprisingly Salvador was the one that said no Mallory said you know it's okay it's fine and then she walked off Salvador turned around and addressed Mallory's family and he's like I don't even know half of you that's here I haven't met you guys I don't think that this is the right decision to make blah 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 a little while after Salvador and Mallory met up and they were really mature about the situation and they sat and they had a conversation and Salvador was like you know I need some time to think but I would want to take you out on a date so the final couple is Ayana and Jared and to be honest at first I did not like these two together but like after seeing them together they were so compatible they were so sweet and I was rooting for them surprisingly Lord Jesus they really did change my mind so Jared was the one that was really invested in Mallory and Mallory was practically his first choice he spoke to Mallory and Mallory said no she would not you know say yes if he were to propose so of course he got his second option Ayana and he told her straight off the bat that I actually asked Mallory this question and she said no so Ayana was very upset about it and she started crying which is really understandable because she's like what if she had said yes you know and I would have asked that question as well because if Mallory said yes Ayana would have been kicked to the curb. I talked to Ayana now and Ayana started breaking the fuck though. Like she was really crying and then she walked off and she, it was a very emotional scene because she had him as her number one and he didn't feel the same way about her. So like finding that out, it did really fuck up and she was really, really crying. Anyways, they meet up back and she said, you know what? I would say yes so he proposed to her and they met up and he was hella tall and she was hella short but just the meeting was really sweet because of the way he was hugging her and coming from a short girl with a bald head when niggas be hugging me like that it is the nicest thing because he was like really cupping her and like holding her head and i love that shit like rip my head when you hugging me baby she was really excited about it and he was excited about it too he was just like you know what fuck it fuck mallory this is my life now and their relationship was really really smooth for the most part like when they were in mexico just the dynamic it was really cute that he got her a polaroid camera and she was like oh my god i love it and she was like so excited and she was so grateful and everything and he gave her a massage and she gave him a massage and, you know all of them nice to say she wanted to wait until they got married for them to do the nasty but at the reunion it was revealed that they actually did the nasty once before they got married and that was in Mexico and I was like hmm I could see that happening because there was like sexual tension between them and all of them something there and I really liked it they were each other's hype man and he would compliment her and she would compliment him and it was like really really nice the issue that I had though Ayana have certain insecurities that I think she needs to let go or it will be an issue in the future of their relationship so she not think say jared should be in contact with any of his exes or anything or he should have anything of the exes she saw that he had like this really nice watch holder i believe and she asked him about it and he's just like oh it was a present from an ex and she's just like why do you still have a present from an ex and he's like well it was a birthday present and it was you know something nice she was like oh you, you don't need to have this blah 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 listen anything an ex give me and the relationship don't may I keep it i'm not here like fuck the meaning it have use Suppose one ex will buy me one car and they will break up. Me not go drive back the car and give him. Me I keep the car. Even though I even give me the car, like, I don't give a fuck. So her turn of thought right there was like, girl, what? It's not like it's a picture with him and her. It's literally something that she gave him. We get to the altar now 
and it was such a beautiful wedding like his dad is a pastor and his dad all is he a pastor i'm gonna remember what his dad is what his dad can do weddings right his dad said that people have asked him to do the weddings and he has said no because he thinks that the first wedding that he needs to minister is it minister i'm gonna remember what the people they went do the whatever the wedding needs to be his son wedding and that happened oh yes we never talk about the meeting of the family oh my god jared's family was like so sweet and so accepting of ayana like right off the bat right away they were so accepting it was so lovely ayana is adopted i think she got adopted when she was a bit older she has quite a bit of trauma and that is something that they shared in the pod like their trauma trauma bonding her adoptive parents were a bit stricter when it came to meeting jared but they did you know say you know what if it makes you happy and at the wedding there were tears tears left right and hence it was like a whole lot of tears it was a very beautiful wedding and both of them said i do and they got married and at the reunion we found out that a year later they're still married and they're still having a beautiful beautiful time now that is all for the liquor rant and talking about love is blind and whatever to be honest i don't really like this experiment like i understand the experiment but i don't think that the experiment worked because to be honest as you can see some of them when they saw each other the attraction was just not there and that was an issue and like it in the real world where you get to know somebody and you know right off the bat that they're not attractive but you're just like you know what whatever fuck it their personality is bomb right you know what you're getting from behind a wall you don't know what you're getting and as i said there's like a lot of things you need to know about a person me many for know oh you eat because if you eat with your mouth open that's not no like there's just certain things that just turn me up many for kind of know a lot of things about you i need to be around you i need to see how you interact with other people there's just certain things that will not make me like you and i want to see all of that before I fall in love with you, I need to know the good, the bad, and the ugly, the nitty, the gritty, the dirty. You understand? Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment if you watch the series. If not, well, I just spoiled everything for you now, didn't I? Anyways, guys, remember to be a beautiful soul, not just a gorgeous face. And until I see you next, bye. May I call the girl Natalie? Natalie, no, no, Natalia, Natalie for true.